Hi, this is Mike. I'm going to show you um, the benefits of pasting text from Word documents and other documents into a web page in a particular way so that we can get the best results. Um, so in this example I have some text given to me by my sister, Sally, and uh, she gave it to me in a, a Word document. So the first thing of course we want to do is uh, copy that text and to clean it up, we'll go via a text editor. And on Windows, the best text editor is Notepad++, as you'll see in a moment. Now, so I've pasted that text in, and there it is there. Okay, now um, I've also prepared some text here to go before and after. So I'll just move that post text after, there like that. Okay, so um, let's take away some of these spaces. So that's the text before, this is the, the kind of the quote in the middle here uh, from her and, um, and uh, I'll just copy all of that and just for now I'll post it straight in to the blog post which I've prepared here. And as you can see this particular website has um, styling and a color scheme and I want to try and work with that as much as possible. So I've already logged in and I'm just going to press the edit button here so that I can edit this post. Now most web page editors will give you a HTML view and a visual view and the reason I'm pointing all of this out is because if you um, if you look at your your web page typical web page editor here you know you might have some controls over some preformats here and you might be able to make text bold or italic but and you might be able to give it a block quote there but you really don't have anywhere near as much control as you did over its appearance in Word with all of these formatting uh, commands here. So let's look at how we actually do achieve that. So it's a good idea to work in the HTML editor for this, as you'll see in a moment. So I'll just paste that text in. There it is, nice and clean, um, because we've taken it from a text editor instead of directly from the, uh, the word processor. And I'll just press update here, and then we'll have a look at the post. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, view this post in a new window so that we can easily go backwards and forwards. So I'll just open that in a new tab. And so there is my introductory text, my post text, and that's the quote, if you like, or the extract from Sally's writing. Now, as you can see, there's no real differentiation between what I've written and what she's written. And that's what we want to address next. If we want to differentiate text from other text on a web page, we need to have some way of targeting styling for that. And one way to do that is by um, putting a wrapper around it and calling it something that we can refer to. So what I've done now is for the text that we actually want to stand out, I've put a div tag before and after. So that's the closed div and that's the div start here. And I've allocated a class to it, include text wrapper. So I'll just update that. And you'll see what the effect of that is. There's, there's, um, there's going to be minimal effect to start off with, um, but um, we'll just see how that goes. Okay, so that's updated. Now I'll just refresh this screen and you'll see there shouldn't be any change, except now I'm going to open a tool called Firebug. Yeah, and um, you can see now that text has a box around it. And that box has a um, class called included text wrapper. And we could have called it anything we wanted, but that's what I've called it here. Okay, now with that, in the CSS definition sheet for this uh, web page, um, now I'm using a WordPress framework called Thesis, so they use a file called custom.css, but for most um, WordPress themes it'll actually be something called styles.css. Anyway you can see here I've defined 
um, div dot included text wrapper. That's the same included text wrapper as as this is here. Okay, and um, now that has popped up there, but there's nothing in there at the moment because I haven't put anything in there. So let's put some stuff in there. And the first thing, just to show you how this is going to work, is we'll just copy some of this styling from something further down. And, um, and this is just to show you an example. All right, so I'll just update that. You don't have to do anything with the post, except now that uh, the div, those div tags are before and afterwards. I can't remember whether I've updated that, so I'll just update that just to be sure. Then I'll refresh this. Now we should get a box around here with rounded corners. Okay, and you can see over here, so this, the class included text wrapper now has these two attributes. So that works. Now, <clears throat> what attributes make sense to this? Um, is uh, uh, it, it depends a little on what you want to do. In this particular case, this is prose. I want to make it look handwritten and I want to set it out from the page itself. Um, whilst still keeping um, some compatibility with the, the look and feel of the page. So I want to inset it, I want to give it some uh, white space around and uh, I also want to allocate a different font to it. So let's do that. Okay, so to save a bit of time, I've uh, added a whole lot of styling to the CSS file here. As you can see, I've added border, um, well these two we started off with, and uh, padding and margin, border radius here. I've added a different font, different font size, I now can control the font size, I can control the letter spacing, the line height, the color, and uh, <clears throat> I've also added a shadow, um, a rotation, and a background gradient. And these are all fairly advanced CSS3 attributes. But I just want to just, rather than teach you how to do it, I just want to show you what the effect actually is. So I've pasted all those in, but then I've deactivated them. So you can see where we're starting from. And now, one by one, I'll just reactivate them here using Firebug. So we had um, the border, you can see the border there, and the border radius there, um, just four pixels. We can play with the, um, the, the radius at each corner. So this is the top left here, so I can make the top left, say, uh, 40 if I wanted to. Doesn't really make sense there. So I'll change it back to four, but maybe the bottom right one we could make a bit bigger. Oh, wrong one. Bottom right is this one. Yep, okay, so that looks nice. Um, we can use percentages here too, and they have an interesting effect because it depends on um, the percentage is a percentage of the dimension in that. So it's, you're actually getting a nice smooth curve here. So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just leave that uh, to show you. Um, what you can do. Now um, let's change uh, that border and give it, uh, now we need to give it some padding to set the, uh, the text in from the box that we've drawn. So that's 20 pixels all around there and we can change the pixels, um, the, the padding along each corner here. So for example if I wanted to make it um, I'll just make them all the same here and then change one. Okay, oops, 20 pixels, 22 pixels. Okay, so that's 20 pixels all around. The first figure is the top, then it's right, and then bottom, and then left. So let's just say um, we wanted to give a little uh, more padding on the left hand side, so we can do that by just changing that like that. All right. Um, okay, so the padding. Now that we've got some padding, we also want to take the whole box and indent it as well. And that's the margin setting there. So we can give that a margin of 10 pixels all around. And similarly for padding, we can change that on a per side basis. 
so I'll just again make them all 10 pixels um, and then change one so what we want to do is actually give it more on the left hand side again so I'll give that 30 all right that's looking good now so we've got um, we've got a border border radius and a slightly unusual radius at on the bottom right here we've got some padding on the inside and some margin on the outside now what else can we play with well let's give it a shadow a box shadow that's a box shadow inset and if I want it on the outside I can do that I actually want it to be inset okay um, and I can play with the uh, the settings for that as well but you may have noticed that I've chosen a color that's that corresponds with the rest of my my website theme okay so that's box shadow um, let's change the um, the font family now um, <clears throat> I have I have incorporated a Google web font called calligraffiti so now this writing looks a little bit more handwritten but I'll, as you can see it's a bit small now so so let's let's make it a bit bigger okay and it's still a little bit crowded so let's give it some um, better line height so that's a bit better it's still a bit crowded so if we increase the letter spacing right that's looking a bit better maybe just a bit too much there on the letter spacing so we'll take it back to 2.2 there right that's looking good so um, and um, to, to, to give it more of a feel that it was handwritten perhaps with a ballpoint pen we'll change the color of the um, of the font to blue like that okay um, next uh, let's give it a bit of a background we've got a really nice background uh, property now we can do it with a um, an image um, but in this case so I'm just going to use a gradient okay so that sets a gradient um, dark light dark light and then back to dark again across the sort of the top left to bottom right diagonal and um, <clears throat> pardon me and that's looking pretty good the last little bit of fluff to this could be let's rotate it a little bit okay now I'm going to take away that um, border radius on the bottom right just make it the same as all the others right Ten pixels there we go and um, yeah so that now looks like an extract on a piece of paper and that's just with CSS so that gives you an idea of what's possible but it's only possible to do this if you've gone to the trouble of wrapping the text in a div and giving that text a class name there and then that gives us the opportunity to target that class with some of these definitions over here okay done